Hi, my name is Eliza de Sola Mendez, and I'm a specialist with antique doll houses and miniatures. And I want to welcome you today. Um, and I want to thank Rachel Hoffman uh, for inviting me to participate in the fourth virtual doll convention. Some of you may know me from the third virtual doll convention. And some of you may also know me from the lectures that I have given uh, in Philadelphia, New York, and Chicago on the history of the Victorian Dolls House. Um, I am a collector and I am a specialist in the field. And um, I, my topic today is going to be the desk in the Dolls House of the 19th century and the mid to late 20th century. We're going to be looking also at the accessories that went with the, the, the dollhouse desks. And in a little bit of an interesting twist, the dolls that I'm going to be showing you are accessories to the desks as opposed to the opposite way as we would usually think. So our emphasis is going to be on the desk. To start, and uh, I'm going to start with the following pieces. Now in the early 19th century, you have pieces like this that are made in Germany. And many of the miniatures that we're going to look at are primarily were made and manufactured in Germany. Uh, some of you may know uh, both dolls and miniatures uh, were sold in the fairs, Nuremberg uh, and other fairs in Germany early on. And some manufacturing was made at home right through the 20th century. In the case of this furniture that you can see here, these desks, we can see that uh, size also did not matter. They made several different sizes and they made this furniture for quite a long period of time. And these desks open up. There were sets of this furniture. They usually came with tables and chairs. But you can see the one major feature that we're going to be seeing throughout the uh, uh, program today is the fact that we have these open uh, doors to the desks. Now, this started making me do a little thinking about all the desks that we're going to be looking at today. And one of the things that I realized was that today, the laptop has taken over for all the things that we're gonna to see today, both the, both the various desks and also the accessories. But that's to come. So let's start with what we have here. So this furniture is um, usually found, one of the things I also wanted to say is that desks seem to be the most popular of these pieces and children must have enjoyed uh, opening them up and taking all the drawers apart. This is another piece, probably just a little bit later, has a slightly different finish. And um, again, we see, and we also sometimes we see mirror and all kinds of versions of these desks were made, so many different versions. Um, and I think what they were trying to do is get a look of flame mahogany with this finish. Um, I think, is this the one? Let me see. Ah, well also sometimes you have a few little things that are inside and you're gonna see that um, in some of the desks that I'm gonna be showing you. Okay, so that is, the that this would be probably somewhere between 1820 and 1850s, this kind of furniture was made. Maybe sometimes a little bit later, yeah. Then we have the following. So here we have a company called Rock and Groner, also German. And this is a very fine metal, also painted to look like flame mahogany. And it's one of the rarest and uh, uh, highly collectible miniatures that you will find today in the market. Um, and then just put this piece here. Okay. And 
And then over here, we have Walters House in Germany and we have Biedermeier Furniture. So I would say, and I would say that Rock and Groner goes for quite a period of time as well. They go um, from the uh, mid 19th century, early to mid 19th century into the late 19th century. And Biedermeier Furniture also goes from the uh, mid 19th century into the late uh, 19th, early 20th. And here we see beautiful marble as well. And uh, we have gold stenciling. here okay and then we're going to go to the period of the uh, let me just see here of the later periods of the uh, into the late 19th century early 20th century we're going to see some of this furniture again in a few minutes, but we're going to see it with the accessories. But I'm going to start this way. So here we have, um, this is a pressed wood. Um, it's also German. All of the pieces that you see right here are German. And uh, this is uh, early 20, late 19th, early 20th century, somewhat what we would call the Art Nouveau period. Over here, we have some uh, Gottschalk pieces, Morris Gottschalk, and again, scale. This was made in many different scales. And over here, we have Golden Oak, as many of you may be familiar with the name, and it's by Gebruder Schneegas, the brother Schneegas. And this, these types of pieces were made in many different forms for quite a long period of time. And, uh, but this is a very beautiful, unusual desk, very, very ornate. going to put some of these over here. We're going to be seeing them again, as I said, in a few minutes. Over here, we have, um, oh, this was supposed to be, well, this chair was supposed to be there with the um, red stain furniture. So over here, we are getting into the 1930s. Can you see that? 1930s and this German furniture again we don't know the name of the company we wish we knew the name of the company that made this kinds of furniture um, and uh, they made all kinds of ornate pieces right up to World War II and they are usually stamped Germany um, and they are quite ornate and quite beautiful and they copied in some forms, they were looking at American furniture. It's, it's quite ironic um, because right up to World War II, there were a lot of pieces that were being made in Germany and in Japan for the American market with American style. But this is also, um, the desk is, I would say, a, sort of a colonial style, something that would have been also seen in Germany. This piece here, is um, Strombecker. This is American and Strombecker made many different sets and that's a lecture in itself um, and they had custom-made pieces. So this is a custom-made desk in the Colonial Revival style and I am working on something related to Colonial Revival um, and uh, that is another um, uh, lecture that I'm working on right now. Talking about Colonial Revival, we come up to Tiny Toy, and that I'm also working on. I'm working on a book in relation to Tiny Toy. It's very exciting. And I know a lot of you love Tiny Toy, and please be in touch with me if you want to um, talk to me about Tiny Toy, because I am working on that. Here we see Colonial Revival, 20th century, and we see some accessories. In a few minutes, we're gonna be looking at a lot more accessories. Um, and you'll see some pieces here which relate to, hmm, where did I put, uh, okay, I had a book um, that we, they relate to um, what you also see in the Queen's Dolls House. 
And um, if you look at the desk, uh, one of the desks in the Queen's Dolls House, you will see some of these pieces. Actually, it's in the library of the Queen's Dolls House. So we start to see very intricate detailed pieces that go with the um, desk. Now the Tiny Toy Company uh, is founded in Providence, Rhode Island, and uh, it, it goes from the early 1920s through to the early 1950s. And uh, it's a very exciting story for another day, but you can see a little bit of their history there. And I'm going to be showing you the dolls in a minute with the accessories. As I said, they're going to be accessories. We have some more pieces coming up. Okay. Second. So after World War II, there's a lot of plastic on the market and the world has greatly changed. There's also not a lot of money um, and people, uh, plastic is very convenient and uh, there's a lot of surplus plastic. So this is Renoir, and we start to see a, this is a really an office desk, which is really quite amazing. This is a pretty rare piece, and it actually swivels as well. Um, and the drawers come out, and I know we have a lot of Renoir collectors um, and uh, Plasco. Um, so this is quite unusual to see. A next piece I want to show you is um, this piece, which is Sonia Messer. Um, it was made in uh, Colombia, and this is mahogany. We talked about flame mahogany and fake mahogany uh, finish, but here we actually have mahogany, and you can actually see on the bottom it says made in Colombia. And these pieces were very expensive at the time. I was a child in the um, period in the uh, late 60s, 70s, and to get a piece was expensive and uh, very special. And this is, this is a piece from my childhood. This is actually a typewriter, and we're going to be talking more about that in a minute. Um, but this is what you see in the um, period uh, that starts with Linfield. It's a company called Linfield which uh, eventually be, uh, turns into Sonia Messer and um, the uh, and Blockhouse, Blockhouse and then Sonia Messer. Um, okay. This is a piece, ah, I forgot, there's a chair. And this is a Linfield chair. So I'll just show you the chair. So. And this is um, Tonkas, it's in, from uh, Massachusetts. And whoops, let me just see here. Very nice, sturdy furniture. Um, it's made in Sturbridge, Massachusetts. Um, this furniture is from the uh, 60s and 70s and beautiful furniture, beautifully made. This chair is just accompanying a chair, but it's also the same period. Okay. So now we're going to be looking, oh, a little mirror that just came out of there that I didn't know was in there. We'll put it back in. Okay, so the next thing I'd like to show you is accessories. So now the accessories are going to be the highlight. To the furniture. So this is the uh, a very good view of a lot of different accessories. And what I'm going to do, this is an overall view, and I'm going to put them with the furniture. So to start, I'm going to show you what would have had what would have gone with a Biedermeier piece like this. So here we have the Biedermeier piece and we have some Erhard and Son 
for Erhard and Sun. Pieces of beautiful Ormolu. And here is um, the set that would have gone to, uh, with a little pen as well. You might have had a little pen. Uh, your ink, ink set, uh, your set for with ink, and uh, and sometimes you also have a, a blotter. Just do you see that? Okay. And I would say that we also would have these pieces as well um, for this period. So actually, I think what I will just do is point out that period as well. So these are also gilded with marble. And uh, this is Gerlach. This company is Gerlach. And here you actually have a very interesting piece because um, you can see little red riding hood. So a popular theme also in dolls at that time. And they're also using uh, uh, pieces for smoking. You can see a little uh, ashtray. This would have had um, different uh, uh, pieces uh, related to the matches and, um, and also for cigars. Um, here we see a, a collection of porcelain. Now this is German, uh, late, it would be early 20th century. And these pieces are rare Limoges pieces um, and uh, highly collectible today. And these were all hand-painted works. Over here, we see a set by Gerlach. And again, we see for smoking, little cigars, um, a lant lantern. And then we see what's coming up in the, the new uh, 20th century we can see pieces like this, where we have um, the typewriter, the telephone. This is an earlier telephone from the uh, 19th century, late 19th, early 20th century. And we have clocks, waste paper baskets again, and again, another typewriter. And these are pieces from the uh, 20th century or, and 21st century that are made by an artisan, but to show you, but looking at back at the Victorian period. And this typewriter, uh, again, from the 1960s, made in Japan, that was in my own dollhouse as a child. So if we look at um, the dolls that would have accompanied, so I'm going to move that out of the way. I'm going to just have a little fun with you and just set up something with the dolls. So here we have a, a doll from the Art Nouveau period. We have a Art Nouveau desk. So I'm gonna show you when you're gonna set up your dollhouse. Let's see, now what am I gonna put on there? I think I'm going to, let's see, put the telephone, put the telephone there. I'm gonna put a clock there. And I'm going to put a typewriter. So let's pick out a typewriter that's the right typewriter, period typewriter. Put a little typewriter there. And ah, I think we need a set for, uh, Let's see, let's see here. Let's put, well, maybe we'll put this over here and put that there. So she's all set. So there you can see how to put miniatures together from the period. Now, let's see, I think we'll do, put this over here.
And let's see, what shall we do? Okay, well, let's look at the dolls to where the dolls that we're going to put in. Um, let's see. Okay, so um, let's see here. Okay, so for the tiny toy, this German doll is perfect. And um, let's take one earlier doll. Let's take this porcelain doll and just show you in terms of, let's see. Okay. So uh, here you can see with the rock and groner. Okay, so now the next thing I'm gonna be doing is showing you some desks. Uh, the, the, with the desks, show you some uh, bookcases because bookcases, of course, would accompany a desk. So I thought to show you just a few. I'm only going to show you this. And then we have uh, one, uh, just a, some, a short something else after. Let me see here. Okay. So here are some tiny, this is a tiny toy uh, bookshelf. This is one that's actually um, a music box as well. This is Dolly Deer. This is an American company uh, that goes from the, um, in, uh, which height of popularity is the, the uh, mid 20th century. Uh, uh, and this is a, um, again, sort of Art Nouveau German. Now, the last things that I'm gonna show you, whoops. Okay, the last things I'm gonna show you are three different things. One is how sometimes you see wonderful, wonderful, rare or, or homemade pieces, things that are not manufactured necessarily. And this is a set from the early 20th century, and it's made out of cigar box wood, which is why it's cracking here. This was not very fine wood, but it's beautifully presented and beautifully done. Let's put a doll next to it so you can see the sizing. Okay. And let me just see. And here we have another set, which I think was probably sold in Chicago um, and also Montgomery Ward. Um, this is probably was made by somebody and then they sold them in sets. This was, a, there's a whole set. This comes with a bedroom set. And uh, here I've uh, just taken a Keiko doll. Uh, this is an early Keiko doll and you can see the sizing. Keiko is a company, a German company um, that manufactures from the uh, 1930s right through till today and uh, with uh, uh, an interesting history as well. So the last things I'm going to be showing you, oh, and actually here I have a little Keiko doll and she would fit very nicely. She's a, was my doll as a child and she'd fit very nicely with the um, Tonko. Okay, so the very last thing I wanted to show you is because we have so many doll collectors and not necessarily dollhouse collectors. So I wanted to show you something very unusual. Okay, this came from England, and uh, you can see the bone, bone draws. And this kind of furniture is a whole nother kind of collectible. This is a, um, the kind of pieces that sometimes are, you'll find with dolls, early dolls. Sometimes they are pieces that were salesman samples. And, um, they have a they have their own history. 
So uh, this is a piece that came with a collection of uh, miniature furniture, but it had a few larger pieces, quite intriguing. And the last piece, which did not come with it, is this chair. And I'm gonna read you a little bit about this chair. So um, this is, uh, this started its life as a salesman sample and uh, it was uh, bought in London uh, from Alfred Punt by Mrs. Thorne in the 1930s. Now, some of you will know who Mrs. Thorne is, the Thorne Rooms you can see in Chicago and uh, in Arizona and other places. Um, she, uh, Mrs. Narcissa Thorne, um, is a very interesting character in the world of early, early, uh, the, 20, uh, the early creation of the artisan miniature. And that is what is very prevalent today in the field of miniatures. So this chair was bought um, by Eugene Kupjak, who some of you know is a great silver miniaturist of the 20th century. And he, and he bought this to be replicated in um, one inch to a foot size uh, for Mrs. Thorne. And um, so this is a, a very interesting piece with a very interesting provenance. The chair itself is in a lyre back chair. Uh, and it was probably made about uh, 19, excuse me, 18, uh, somewhere between 1830, 1840, uh, approximately. Um, and it has a beautiful uh, reed seat. So I want to thank you all. I hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed being with you, and I look forward to future times together, and I want to thank you so much. Thank you, Rachel.